my fellow creepers and things that go bumping tonight. Welcome back to yet another episode of Creature of the Night. I am your host, Toxin, your friendly neighborhood center. You should know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell to let you know every time I upload so you can keep up to date with me, guys. Let's get on it. Uh, let's dive right into this one. Uh, the 2022. Glorious. Feelings tear you up inside. Pure and raw. That's what I need from you. What did you do, Wes? I'd driven the extra 40 miles to the next rest stop. That wouldn't have helped. Why? Is there a troll living in that one? Oh, just gotta... Let's talk about this. Uh, got mad uh, Lovecraft vibes from this film. Uh, essentially, we meet Wes. Uh, we don't know exactly what's going on. We just kind of see him driving, fall asleep at the wheel. And we're as uh, it's going along, we kind of get this, uh, this vibe. Okay, like, you know, his girlfriend left him. He keeps calling her. He's at a rest stop. And he's just like, he's drinking, he's, he's without sleep, his car's all packed up. And then eventually he just, you know, says fuck it, starts burning everything, every memento that he has. Especially this little red box was just kind of the center of everything because he keeps glancing at it even while driving to the rest stop. And it just burns everything, wakes up the next day from a killer hangover. His pants were ignited by the fire, I'm guessing. He goes and uses the restroom and the, first off, the fucking... A rest stop restroom is hilarious to me. There's this gigantic group. Any restroom you've been in, you know, you know the fucking, like, I definitely on, on road trips, you definitely see all the graffiti and everything that's written on the walls, the crazy shit that people leave behind. This one's no different, but this one's, like, hardcore. Like, there's some kind of entity, some kind of demigod that is painted in the stall. <laughs> and the mouth of the demigod is a glory hole. If you don't know what that is, don't go looking it up. You fucking perverts i'm probably the biggest pervert because i know what the hell that is but if you know you know um as and that's when we start noticing you know as he's, he's vomiting into the toilet he starts speaking to something next like somebody next to him and right off the back i already recognized the voice as jk simmons like love that dude and his voice is unique one of a kind so how could you not you know and as things are going on you know things are like uh he's beginning to you know ask him questions and and all that uh get um uh, and they, you know, exchange information as uh, the names, and we get that the, the person's name in the next stall is Gath. And the way he tells you how to do, how to say it is like, um, grab the tip of your tongue and say say it at a decent pace, uh, slowly preferred. Uh, got another one, and that's how you pronounce. It. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, I'm not gonna do. Got Yes, that's it. Gata Novoa. Yes. I believe he starts confronting him about deep started, like deep seated issues and telling him basically, and that's what kind of caught me, caught my eye about this film was uh, like the slogan on the cover was the universe has a favor and uh, along with the colors that seem to be going around on all the horror films nowadays and him, the fact that he is actually holding a severed leg, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, the universe has a favor and that's when we come to see that he is like, one of the oldest living gods. <laughs> a god trapped in a truck stop bathroom stall. You know, I guess if gods are going to be anywhere, they're going to be anywhere, right? It's might as well, why is that place any different? Um, but we start feeling for this guy just because, you know, he, again, he's gone through a breakup. He's going through some serious shit. And now he's stuck in a bathroom. And then this guy's kind of like hounding him and telling him that he needs a favor. And he's kind of explaining his history. I did like that. Again, very Lovecraft vibes with the gigantic ball with tentacles coming out of it. He's telling us about how Gath is telling us about his father who essentially created him because he started, the father was in a void and he started feeling these emotions. And that once he started feeling these emotions, they started producing these children. And out of spite, he hated that, I guess because he did like being alone. So he starts hunting them down, killing them one by one. Until the oldest of the son actually slices his side and out comes this, uh, like, life, essentially. The planets, the earth, mankind, and he, he, like, he, it just won't close up. So he begs the remaining children to sew it back up, but on one condition, that if he doesn't kill all life. And he's like, he agrees to it. He ties him up, but he still hates that life. He still hates the fact that he's not alone, that this void is no longer void and is no longer his. So he creates Gath for destruction, but they end up locking the father away in the ether and trapping Gath in the ether as well. And until like this point, I guess that Gath is kind of reaching his 
potential. Like he's like, okay, I feel the like what my father created in me. I feel that urge to destroy mankind. But he's like, I over the years, over the centuries, I have grown to love them and you know accept them. So he's like, I need you to please my physical side, satisfy my physical side to so I won't do that and I can go back to the ether and sleep. And it it would. It was just, it was just, oh my god, it was just out there. Like, I was just like, what the fuck is, it, it kept my eyes glued to the screen. I was like, what is going on? Why is he in the rest stop? Why is there a glory hole, you know, joining them, adjacent to this? And I, and when he kind of dropped that ball, we're like, oh, so, you know, satisfying my physical side. Me too, thinking, I was like, this is going to be some weird sexual alien god type thing going on right now, you know. And him, him trying to escape that... I guess the property owner Gary C comes up and try and goes into the bathroom and he's like, "What the fuck is going on?" And the guy warns West, you know, just get in the stall, like I'll handle everything. And that's kind of where it reveals his true self. We don't really see him; we see him through the cracks. That weird, awkward moment you see you catch eyes with somebody through your stall, and he fucking obliterates Gary, literally shrieking him with blood. And we just see it cover West, the restroom, and this photo of I guess we're guessing the girl that he. Uh, that broke his heart and left him and that's when like uh, you know he tells Wes you know once he drops that line about satisfying my physical thing he in my head again I don't know if because I'm a pervert or what the hell but I'm thinking too like since I can see can't lay eyes on him because it will transform him into something that everyone will wonder why did God make this why is this thing alive anyway that he sticks his ding -a up into the glory hole onto the other side and Gath is just like what the hell is this? Like, where did I say I needed your genitals? Where did I say? He said, well, you know, the way you, you expressed it kind of sounded like, I need your liver. My liver? Okay, wow. So, yeah, and he kind of dropped that fact that, oh, you can live with, like, 25%. It will, re it will regenerate. He just needs a slice of the liver. I guess, like, since the liver, liver being, like, one of the things that kind of, like, filters out everything, um... I guess all the hate and all the sadness and every kind of emotion that he was feeling over the years because he, he, kind of, he constantly expresses, even telling a story about his father, how his father used to cheat on his mother and his mother ended up taking his life and saying that, and then the father coming back and saying that his mom was being the selfish one, that all this, that hate, you know, and all that taking and saying that, oh, you know, you're saying, oh, it's like for the better, but it's not. Like, it's just, you're just saying this because at the end of the day, it's all about control. It's all about... It's all about like for that specific person, that for specific, that specific being's purpose. It was it's just for them. It just helps them. It doesn't help anybody else. So I thought that it, it not only did it go you know into like the beginning of, of life, uh, but into like the emotions of like how somebody can like, kind of like a Joker situation in my opinion. How life can break you down and how you have this vague, dark outlook on life because everything that is constantly bad keeps happening to you. Which and but, you know, there's two sides to that. You know, people who have gone through similar situations come out either way. Like Wes, seeing just darkness or doing everything they can to get out of the darkness and reach for the light and becoming a bigger, better person. So I thought that was pretty dope that he kind of explored that situation and given us just a twist on how a conversation with God, devil, whatever you want to call, like how that's like versus being in like a fancy restaurant or... <coughs> Excuse me, allergies are bad. Um, that um, seeing just a, a regular conversation between an almighty being can be transformed and, you know, putting you in a weird, awkward situation. You're in the bathroom where you don't really necessarily have to have this conversation, but it's like, what can you do now that you're stuck here and just listen to it? So, like, as this is going on and we're seeing and we're, and the father of the all being, like, the one true creator is making its way and breaking in. He does decide to actually open up his stomach himself and letting Gath take a piece of his liver. But with that being said, we finally, in this moment where he's making a sacrifice to save the universe, that we see what Wes really was, what that was in the red box. And we come to see that Brenda, the girl who le who left him, found was in this in this fucking red box was actually pictures of girls screaming for their lives cowering in fear and that's when we make the big reveal that Wes is actually a serial killer he is the darkness in this world as Gaz put it like we're the horrible things that does not belong here in this beautiful world we don't deserve to see its beauty so I'm guessing because 
Gath being an agent of destruction and Wes being a serial killer, you know, depriving the world of living beings both on the similar plane that he just needed, I guess, another part. I don't, he just needed that darkness to keep going to suppress his inner urges and then just go, you know. It, it was it was pretty dope because after the whole thing, I thought, like, why is this happening? This guy's, you know, down on his luck, and then they just got that big twist that he is actually a piece of shit himself. He doesn't deserve to live either. Even at the end, when everything goes back to normal, when uh, Gath goes back into the ether, the father gets locked away again. That we see that when he's like, "Oh, my hero," you know, I save the universe. He's like, "No," and then he kind of drops a, a famous line, you know, "No heroes get remembered. Like me, you and I will be forgotten." Like, we don't deserve to be here, just like I just said. And he kind of just goes and ends up dying. Like, getting out of the, the restroom finally ends up dying on the curb. It was it was a roller coaster of emotions. Again, I thought I saw where it was going. It made me feel for Wes. And at the end, I was just like, you know what? Fuck Wes. It was good. Thanks for the sacrifice, but I'm kind of glad that you're dead and you, you know, you fucking are no longer on this earth. Uh, again, roller coaster of emotion, guys, but it kept my eyes glued to the screen. It kept me at the edge of my seat. I couldn't even eat. I was eating while I was watching. I couldn't even eat. I was just so focused on what the hell was going. Uh, the colors, the color scheme and everything, and the amazing writing was fucking on point the way they spoke. And it was just so awesome to just be so engaged with Gath and not really seeing him until the end. Like when when uh, Wes is about to faint, the stall opens and this big light. And I guess he just goes back into the ether. You just see this big old ball with multiple eyes and mouths and tentacles. And like, it was like not a big reveal, like, oh my god, it was just like creepy, like, what the fuck, this is what you're seeing, so, but having the whole film not being able to see who this guy fucking is, you just see this glory hole and this fucking weird ass painting that's on the wall on it, like, it was just, it was just insane, like, I loved it, like, I was just engaged, I was just, I could not stop listening to Gath, and like, his, the way he was, uh, his speeches and all that were amazing, cinematography was amazing, guys, and it is on Shudder. I'm not too familiar with Shutter, uh, but somebody let me borrow the login to watch it. So I highly recommend getting Shutter. I'm definitely, you know, gonna get it now just because there's a lot of shit on there that I have been missing out on. So more to come from there, guys. But let me know what you thought about this film. Let me know what you thought about this review down in the comments below. Again, guys, if you had any suggestions of anything that you want me to review up and coming or from the past just let me know guys please like subscribe and share 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 my videos guys uh, and follow my tiktok because there is another preview of whatever video i'm currently doing on there as well so yeah guys like i always say if you're not sinning you're not having fun beware the moon guys